Hi, and welcome back to Cause Say. I am here with Ghost Boy Cosplay. You want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> wow, it's fine. I know how to do my job. <laughs> anyway, we're going to just jump right into it like we always do. Let me ask my first question. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> So let's start off with the basics. When did you first start cosplaying? Um, so actually, I think it was, sorry, I'm looking over my calendar. I think the 13th actually made it a year ago that like I officially started cosplaying consecutively. Um, sorry, my dog is being exercised by a demon again. It's fine. Um, <laughs> But my first ever cosplay that I ever did, I was like 14, mm -hmm. and I did Misa Misa from Death Note. So that was like the first time I technically started cosplaying, but I didn't do it consecutively until about a year ago, because that's, you know, adult, and I had the money to spend on it. Makes sense. So what was your first cosplay from, like, when you started consecutively? Um, I actually did CL from Black butler um i think it's episode three where he has like the pink dress and he has to pretend to be his aunt's niece or whatever and he was like really mad about it and i'm like that's me i hate dresses so let me dress in a dress and be mad about it all day we love that um i know that one of your followers submitted a question and it was um what what or who inspired you to start cosplaying can you give us a little insight on that um, I was that kid that I got into anime, like, really, really early, um, <laughs> and plot twist, I had no friends, um, so I was like, anime, that stuff's really cool, so I started watching that, and I was just like, and I'm, I'm actually gonna quote Prickly here, I, I ken Toga for like a whole five seconds for this, where I'm just like, it's not enough to like you, I want to be you. So then I discovered cosplay and I was like, I can dress up as these. And I like, I love Halloween. So I'm just like, cosplaying is like Halloween every day. What? And it just kind of spiraled from there. Can you lift, oh wow. Can you list, can you list off some of the cosplays you do? It's fine. <laughs> um, I thought you were gonna ask me if I can lift and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> do you even lift, bro? You can lift? <laughs> Um, so I have, ma'am, we're not doing this right now, please. No. Stop. Oh. Okay, you're in the interview now. You did this to yourself. Um, so I have Bakugo, Kirishima. I have Todoroki, but I don't really wear him a whole lot. That's my ear. Um. I already said Kirishima. Uh, uh, I have some cosplays from uh, Assassination Classroom. I really love that show. Uh, okay. Um, I have I have a lot. There's like a whole tote. Oh, I, I have Link from Breath of the Wild. And I cannot wait to like finish tweaking his stuff so I can like actually wear him and do photo shoots and like start making videos. That'll be cool. So what's your favorite one to do? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. You don't have a favorite or they're like all your favorite? kind of like a little bit of both like i don't know it just depends on the day like for three consecutive days i'm like kirishima is my boy like kirishima is my baby that's my baby okay i will die for him but i'm just like i'm, I'm kirishima i'm gonna cosplay him every single day and then other days i'm like i want to be bakugo and then i'm like let's do this one or like let's do this one like it really changes depending on my mood like which one my favorite is for the week i guess do you have one that you are the most proud of Um, 
I know right now I am working on Red Riot's hero stuff. Um, I have his shoulder gears done and put together. I just need to make his belt and stuff like that. So I think right now, even though that one's not done yet, I'm still really, really proud of it and how it's coming together so far because I'm really big on, I try not to judge things before I'm finished with them because then I get mad and I'm like, this isn't the way I want it to be. But it's been completely different with Kirishima's gears. I'm like, these are coming out fantastic. Like, I'm super happy with them. These look so good. And now I just need to do his belt with his, like, tattered cape at the end and his face mask. So even though it's not done yet, I'm actually really proud of that one. And I'm hoping to try to get it done before Momo so I can wear it at Momo. Awesome. Um... Do you have a least favorite cosplay that you do? I know I have one. Hold on. I'm trying to... I will probably never cosplay Misa Misa again. Like, ever. Um... Trying to think. Like, here's my bracelet. Um, I don't know. Because I think I try to put a lot of the thought into my cosplays before I cosplay them. Mm -hmm. and I'm just like, I don't want this to be one of those where I cosplay it once and then never do it again. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to go with Misa Misa because that was more or less like a closet cosplay that I did mm -hmm. when I was really young. So I probably probably wouldn't do her again because like I love the show, but she's so annoying. <laughs> um, do you have a most expensive cosplay? I do. And it is actually, and a lot of people don't know about it. They know CLs, but they don't know Sebastian's. But it's like this really fancy suit from Black Butler, and it's for Sebastian. And it's like really, really fancy, and it has like this like cape thing with like feathers on the back of it, and it's got jewels everywhere. Like it's it's super super fancy, and. Um, that is my most expensive cosplay. Do you know how and much you spent on it? Over three hundred dollars. Woo! Wow, that's expensive. Yeah, it was very expensive, and I worked hard to save up my money. And I was like, I was like, I'm gonna get CLs, and I was like, no, I'm gonna get Sebastian's because I am that asshole. Like. Me and Sebastian were just like, I'm a smart ass, it's fine. <laughs> and plus he wears like the awkward shorts and I'm like, I don't like my legs, we're doing pants. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, so that's all the questions I have about cosplay. Uh, you wanna talk about some conventions? You wanna talk about your uh, best experience at a convention? Um. I don't think my like number one experience at a convention is very appropriate for this. So we're gonna, I can tell you it later. Remind <laughs> me after the interview is done. I will so tell you it later. Um, <laughs> it was a wild time. Um, you heard it here, folks. I, huh? I said you heard it here, folks. <laughs> Listen, it was, Okay, um, so um, I would have to say so far it is a tie between AWA last year and Anime St. Louis because at Anime St. Louis I met this girl Michelle and her boyfriend Zach and they were so cool and so nice. Like literally we met we clicked and we hung out the rest of the weekend like and we still talk to this day like I just like this person literally came out of nowhere and we just became friends and they're still my friend we still talk like I love them dearly um 
And then tying with that would have to be AWA because that's when I officially met Prickly face to face. I met Okami Queen face to face. I met Chronically Bored face to face. Cricket cosplay, Crybaby cause. I met Rue. Okay, so like I'm a really really big fan of Rue's. I love their demon Danky. Okay, and I have never seen them outside of cosplay. And I'm 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 here and I'm chilling. And they're like, hi, this is Rue. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? What's up? Cool, nice to meet you. And they're like, okay, I'm gonna go get in cosplay for the con. And I was like, okay, bye, have, have fun. And they come out and they're Demon Dinky. And I just look over and they're in Demon Dinky and they just go, instant panic. I start freaking out and hyperventilating. And I had to like, get, I, like they were like, do you want to hug? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, I was just like, I didn't realize it was them. And they were like, you literally said hi to them five seconds ago. And I was like, but I didn't know what the heck that did. What the I couldn't talk, like I was hyperventilating and I had to grab my inhaler and then I met Lane and like that Prickly is, Prickly and Okami Queen are little buttheads for this. They caused an asthma attack on purpose because um, I was in Todoroki and I had a blind contact in on this eye and it was like a legit like blind contact, not the graded ones. It was blind. I couldn't see out of this eye. And they had Lane standing over here and they came and got me because I went to go do something. And then they came and got me and brought me back and I'm talking to Okami Queen and they were like, oh, by the way, look that way. And I turn and I look and then all of a sudden you just like Lane's like this and they're just like, hey. And I was like, oh. and I couldn't breathe, I couldn't move, I couldn't talk. And I'm just like freaking out. And I started getting really, really lightheaded and I had to sit down and next thing I know, Okami Queen is like, do you need your inhaler? And I'm like, uh, like, I'm like, you guys are really mean for that. Like, I love it, it was a great experience, but you guys are really mean. You caused an asthma attack. You are butt faces, but I love them dearly and like it just AWA was just full of so many great experiences and meeting so many people and be, getting to be friends with so many people so it's like AWA and Anime St. Louis last year are probably top tier <laughs> they sound like I really cool experiences I'm sorry no no it's cool honestly it's really fun to hear people's good experiences um now we're gonna talk about your worst experience do you have one of those do you want to share it i do um i gotta really think because it's one of those like i kind of try to block it out because i'm just like whatever people are dumb um so it was actually the first con i ever went to and there was this guy there who was like really really cool and mind you the first time i had ever gone to a con i was 14. i went with my cousin's girlfriend at the time so she was you know four years older than me so she was 18. Uh, and she took me and like you know had fun and everything um but there was this guy there and he was really cool made friends with them he said he liked my cosplay and i was like thanks you know it's closet cosplay i kind of just grew together he was really really nice but then he got really creepy and then wouldn't leave me alone. And he was like 17, 18 years old. And I'm like, I'm 14, can you go away now? And he just kind of wouldn't leave me alone to the point where I kind of had to make a scene in front of like a group of people I did not know to get him to leave me alone. And I didn't see him the rest of the convention um but i think that's like probably one of the worst experiences because like i said i uh, it's about a year ago now that i started recently going back to cons and conventions and stuff again and actually actively cosplaying so i mean throughout the years i've continued to go to cons it was just it was like one of those i'd show up for a day walk around hang out with friends and then you know leave call it a day um and so like i've had other stupid experiences but i think that's the one that's really stuck with me and kind of more or less made me more of an asshole. So I'm very big on if, even if you do not know me and you are at a con and there is somebody being weird, please come up to me 
and just be like, hey, where have you guys been? Like, whatever you need to do. If you feel uncomfortable and you see me in or out of cosplay and you need an escape goat, I got you. Because I know how uncomfortable those situations can be. That's really cool of you. It sucks that it took that experience to make it happen, but honestly, it's really cool that that's something that you're willing to do. Well, definitely, because, you know, and I mean, especially with minors that go to conventions, like, it might be, you know, two minors just kind of walking around because their parent was like, you know, yeah, go have fun. I'll pick you up later tonight. You know, their parents are trusting that they're going to be safe at this convention. And you get that one super creepy person, you know, that is just all like, hey, and they're like, no, but you know, some people don't understand the word no. So I'm, I always try to, especially if I know it's a convention that I'm going to be going to, I'm like, if you see me at this con and you are around somebody that is making you feel uncomfortable and you see me, please approach me and just like, hey, hi, what's up? I've been looking for you all day. You know, and then if I if I look at you like you're funny, just kind of give me that look of this and I'm gonna be like, hey, and I'm just gonna like embrace you and hug you and I'm be like, hey, we were getting ready to go over here. Do you want to come with us? And I will, for lack of a big term, I will hijack you away from that situation. And I mean, who knows? We may end up becoming really cool friends after it. I mean, if you're a minor, not not so much. Like I'll be nice to you, but I don't know. I'm very uncomfortable around minors because I'm like, I'm 25. So like minors kind of freak me out. I'm like, <laughs> it's a scary situation. It is because like, you never know what can happen. And I'm just like, ah. like, I'll be nice to you. I'll talk to you. I'll answer cosplay questions. I will get you out of an uncomfortable situation, but please do not ask for any of my personal information. Like I'm not going to give you my phone number, or my Facebook or my Snapchat, like, you got my Instagram. That's that's cool. You know, I'll say hi to you every now and then or answer cosplay questions. But really, I mean, outside of that, I don't typically respond if a minor messages me, just because I'm like, I don't know, I don't know your intent, and I'm an adult. So yeah, no, it's you. not a matter of being a dick. It's just a matter of trying to keep yourself and the minor safe. Exactly. And that's something Sorry, that needs like, to be understood. No with yeah so i'm like i don't i don't care to answer like if you have questions or you're curious about something or you want to know where i got a wig or how i made something like i will answer those all day but to have a personal friendship with you if you are a minor it's 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 a hard no when you hit 18 maybe because then i won't get in trouble yeah but it's just the world is now you can't even be friends with somebody who's 17 without people blowing it out of proportion so i'm just like you're not 18 i'm sorry but we cannot be friends yeah i totally get it um is there anything else that you want to say on that topic while we're here like you can say whatever you want this is this is about you and how you feel in the cosplay world i honestly absolutely love the cosplay community so much it's so very accepting and open and wonderful. I mean, don't get me wrong. You, you have like your drama that, you know, either you or somebody else is involved in or like that you hear about, you know, I mean, we're all human. There's drama everywhere you go. Um, but the cosplay community itself, it's just, it's so open. It's so kind and so caring. And, you know, people don't judge you. Like they don't care. Like, oh, you bought that offline. Looks great you made that at home and it's not completely accurate it's slightly off or it doesn't look right who cares you worked hard on that we're still gonna hype you up on it like i absolutely love that and i'm a firm believer on if you are a cosplayer that makes fun of another cosplayer in a very negative way or to bring them down then you're not a true cosplayer you're just a mean person who wants to play dress up in my opinion Wow, that was like, that That really, that hits hard. It's really cool that you say that because um, I think that that's something that, you know, that speaking on it makes it so that there is a lot more positivity because people will be like, oh, hey, you know, maybe, maybe they're right. 
So I think it's really cool yeah. that you can speak out and say stuff like that. It means a lot, especially since it's on my show. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, and then, like, and I'm also really big on, like, it literally does not matter, your, your gender identity does not matter, your, you know, skin color doesn't matter, your body shape and size does not matter. You want to cosplay a character? Cosplay that character. Who cares if it's not correct to the show or the manga? I am sorry that this person was born green and they want to be this purple character. That's not their fault. Let them, it's about having fun and coming together and doing what we all love. And that's dressing up as our favorite characters and complimenting each other and seeing other people's things and asking questions and making new friends. Like that's what it's about. Not tearing each other down because in your eyes, it's not right. Hateful things like that, you can just keep to yourself. You heard it here, guys. Um, <laughs> no, honestly, though, like, I love watching cosplayers talk about their, like, how they feel about the community. And it's my favorite thing to watch it when it's positivity because it's like you can see. I don't think you guys realize how like passionate you get about it but you're like sitting here like you're like hyping it up you're like this is how i feel and this is how like this is this is facts and i'm just sitting here like that it's so beautiful to see like damn <laughs> it's like i i i follow so many cosplayers that are african-american because like that that's actually my favorite like my absolute favorite is seeing an African an African American cosplayer that's just like, bam, and I'm like, yes, yes. It makes me so, like when I came across one. Uh, she she was in Bakugo's hero suit, but she did a spin on it, and she made it feminine, and she called him uh, Bakufro, and she had like this blonde. Did you afro. post a picture about it? I don't think I did. I was just, I seen it on TikTok and she had this blonde afro. She had his hero suit, but it was like a crop top. And she had these like high-waisted shorts on and she was walking somewhere and she was like power strutting. And I'm like, yes, queen. Yeah, yes. I saw it on somebody's yes. story this morning. Oh my gosh. Like, I, don't even I was know just like, was. yes. Like it just, it made me so happy because I'm like, stereotypes and stuff like that should not matter like we're all here because we enjoy the same thing so why sit there and tear somebody down like if you're a nasty person like that then just go home we're all here to hype each other up even if like their costume quote unquote looks really bad like you don't know how long they spent on that how hard they worked on that like how would you feel if something you spent over a hundred hours on that you thought looked absolutely fantastic and someone just was like, mm, you're going to be upset. So don't do it to somebody else. Like, just, I'm going to stop talking about it now because now I'm getting mad. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's cool. I think people just need to follow the golden rule. Treat people the way you want to be treated. And that's something that you're capitalizing on. And I think it's cool. Exactly. And if you like being treated like crap, well, then for that situation, just be treated the way you don't want to be treated in that instance, then I don't know. Just be nice. How about that? Everybody needs to be nice. Just be nice. It's not that hard. Uh, okay, so we're gonna move on so I don't make you even more angry because I know you I know you'll go off on this. Um, that I'm gonna look like a scary guy going off. You don't look scary. I think he, I think it looks more passionate than anything, and I think it's really cool. Uh, that's how I see it. And if anybody else doesn't see it any that way, then the, maybe they need to readjust their perspective a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so do you have any advice for your followers, your fans, uh, new cosplayers, literally anybody? Don't give up. Um if you are working on something and you're getting really frustrated and it's not coming out the way that you want it to put it down stop working on it set it to the side 
and depending on how flustered or irritated you are, either just take a step back, maybe go watch a few episodes of like your favorite show or something, or go watch a movie, go hang out with some friends, just like literally step away from it, breathe, give it a few days, and then come back to it. Um, Or if you have other projects and that's not like on a crunch time, do one of the other projects, get another project started or finish a different project but step away from it because if you continue to work on it while you're in that state of mind of nothing's going right, then you're going to think everything is going to continue to go wrong and it's never going to come out the way that you want it to. Um, and I'm speaking from personal experience in that regard because I can style wigs on other people, but to style and cut my wigs, I want to throw myself out a window. Um, so I will start on a wig and then it's it starts depending on the wig and what I'm doing. Like my Bakugo wig, I'm just like, you were the spawn of Satan. I'm not touching you. Berkeley is actually going to cut it and style it for me. I'm gonna probably put it on and let them cut it and style it that way. Um, but I'm like, you're the spawn of Satan. I'm not touching it. Like I s- cut and styled my, uh, Prince bubblegum wig and it gave me false confidence that I could style Bakugos. So I'm like, nope, nope, I'm stepping away from it because I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna scream, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it. Um, so just take a step back and also do not be afraid to go to thrift stores. Playing with the light. Yeah, I'm trying to get it to stop shining that way. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, it looks fine on my end. Like, it just looks like you have a glowing orb over here. Just chilling, hanging out. Like, you look fine. You look absolutely fantastic. I look like a rat, but okay. Hey, listen. I like rats. They're cute. (gasps) You're not the only person to say that to me. (laughs) So that you just still complimented yourself. So (laughs) anyway. (laughs) See what happens when I'm on here? (laughs) Um, But don't be afraid to go to thrift stores. Um, or even like hit up some friends that are like, Hey, do you need to go through your closet and get rid of stuff? Because even if it's something that you're not actually going to wear, you can use it as fabric if you know how to sew and you're like, Oh, I can use this fabric on this. And then you don't have to go to the store and buy the fabric because it's very possible. You already have the fabric, especially if it's a shirt or a pair of pants that you never wear or they don't fit. You be just be resourceful. Go to flea markets. Go to thrift stores. Um, I know it takes a while, but Wish is a really good place to find things because there are things that I found on Wish that are on Amazon. On Amazon, they're like thirty three dollars, and I found it on Wish for like ten bucks. Yes, Wish takes roughly like three months before you get your crap. But if you know it's something like if you plan ahead, like if you're, you know, and try to be organized, um, being organized helps. If you suck at being organized, um, Dirty Shinobi actually, um, he talked about it and I looked it up. There's an app called Cost Planner where you can put every single cosplay that you want to do, you are doing or you have done. And it, you can put up checklists and it's just, it's this really, it's really cool. It's a really, really cool app. It helps you stay organized. It helps keep track of your progress, um, of how you're doing things that you still need to get. Um, and it's free. It is a free app. You don't have to pay for it, which was my favorite part about it. Um, but just don't be afraid to do thrift stores and don't be afraid to try something new. Like if you're just like, Oh, I want to cosplay this character but I don't have his outfit. If it's a casual outfit that he's wearing, then you can just wear casual clothes that you have, or you're just like, that looks like something he would wear, wear it. Like you don't always have to be in full cosplay. Like sometimes you just need a wig and some contacts and boom, you're good to go. Oh, thank you for that. That was some really good advice. Um, Actually, I've never heard of Cosplender before, so that was like really helpful. Um, yeah, um, Dirty Shinobi had talked about it one time on one of his stories, and I was like, what is it called again? And he, uh, I about had a heart attack, but he responded to my message on Instagram and was like, it's called Cosplanner, and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, heck yeah, thanks. And I downloaded it, 
And that's how I know exactly how many cosplays I want to do. <laughs> What's that number? 32. Well, do you want to share some of your cosplays with us? Um, in no specific order. Like, I don't know when I'm going to be able to cosplay a lot of these. Um, but I know uh, a few of my hero characters, I want to do their hero suits. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do Kakashi Hatake from Naruto. Um, I want to do Soul from Soul Eater. And I want to do Death the Kid. But I want to do a very specific version of Death the Kid. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't know how many people have actually watched Soul Eater. So I don't want to give anything away. Um, oh gosh, who else is in there? Uh, Beast Boy. I want to cosplay Beast Boy so bad. You make it so um, Beast Boy. Aww. I love Beast Boy so much. He's a little shithead and I love it. Um, I want to cosplay Robin and uh, Nightwing. Um, I want to cosplay Danny Phantom. Um, I have everything. I just need to do a cause test of it. Uh, but there's another character from Danny Phantom that I'm going to be cosplaying actually here soon um, when I get the motivation to get off my tuchus. Um But there, there's a lot of them in there. There's 32. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. I didn't know it was that many until I downloaded the app and I just started putting them in there and I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> You're living the life. <laughs> what? I want to be how many different people? It's fine. Oh, I forgot to ask. Um, You don't have to share if you're uncomfortable, but how did you and Prickly meet? Like, how did that start happening? Um, so... What it... <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> I need water. Hold on. <laughs> So it was actually back when, because me and Prickly actually roughly both got on TikTok at the same time. Mm -hmm. we, we discovered that when we like tried to figure out when like our one year TikTok cosplay anniversaries were like, and um, so I was, it was when I first got my TikTok. I hadn't really started cosplaying on here yet. I was just kind of making videos and being dumb. Um, and I had gotten this Bakugo wig. It was really terrible. Oh, there's a cat at my door. I was like, what is that noise? Um, so like, I was just like, I got this Bakugo wig and I started cosplaying Bakugo and I'm like, oh, this is a really cute Kirishima. Like, I'm gonna do what them. Like, you know, their Kirishima is really good. They look absolutely adorable. Did not know it was Prickly. Like, I had no idea it was them at all. A few days later, came across another Kirishima cosplayer. And I was like, I'm going to duet them, too. And then still didn't know it was Prickly. Like, I did not know it was the same person. And then I came across another video where they weren't in cosplay. And it, I saw in a caption where it said, like, mutuals duets. And I'm like, well, I'm not their mutual, but maybe we can end up being friends. Because, like, I don't have any and um so i like duetted them and i don't even remember what i put in the caption or what i said but then they commented on it and said that they liked it so i just said friends with like a, like a bunch of question marks i was like friends question mark question mark question mark um because like i'm awkward and i don't actually know how to make friends so and then they followed me back and we followed each other on instagram um and like that was about it until I think I actually had to scroll back the other night because I was really curious. I'm like, I really want to know what our first conversation was because I don't, I genuinely don't remember. And so I sat there and just scrolled through our messages on Instagram until I got all the way to the first message. And the first message was literally, I sent them a photo of a sun reflector in somebody's windshield that had cactuses all over it. And I sent it to them and I was like, you need this. 
And they were like, bet, I'm on my way. And I was like, oh, you about to steal. Okay, we in Florida, see you soon. And that was the end of the conversation. And I'm just like, the first conversation we ever had, I encouraged you to be a thief. (laughs) Great way to start off our friendship. (laughs) Um, And then kind of from there, it was just like, we'd message here and there. Um, I told them congratulations on, you know, hitting 100K when they hit 100K. Um, It was just, we just kind of would talk here and there. And then we became friends that talked a little bit more. And then we met at AWA. And then, like, we physically met at AWA. And then, like, I don't know, we just kind of went from there and... Now they're my partner, and I'm pretty freaking happy about it. You guys are adorable together. Anyway, that's, like, all the questions I had, because I did it backwards, where I I just let you talk about your advice first and then asked you that last question. Anyway, on how to do my job. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to um end the thing now, and uh, for all of my Kase fam, y'all know – wow, y'all – everybody knows that I'm going to be posting uh, weekly again so keep an eye out for that I'm actually really happy to be posting again every other week so it means more episodes with more amazing people like this one um, so yeah I will see you guys next week thanks for watching bye bye